Dr. Keisha Callens, the author on our soon to be released plant-based diet toolkit. Dr. Callens is a Georgia trained obstetrician gynecologist with community healthcare systems, a federally qualified healthcare network in central Georgia. Good morning, everyone. And thank you so much for joining us today. Also a special thank you to our two previous presenters. I am now very interested in looking at both of those things. I had an interest in um, considering an electric vehicle. And so that was a really good overview. And then composting is just something I hadn't really thought of. And so thank you for that introduction. And I'll do, definitely do some follow-up. And with that, I get a chance to talk to you about a very important part of what we can do in terms of the solution towards the climate crisis. And so I've been very bold and I've just titled this presentation, Living a Plant-Powered Life. Um, just really, it's all about mindset. And I want to ask everyone to keep an open mind because of some of the things that I will share with you will challenge you just a little bit. And in full disclosure, um, as a physician, I would ask you to eat healthy anyway. So everything that we're talking about is right in line with what we would recommend. However, I would like to spend some time today presenting just how um, beneficial those choices can be for our environment as well. Next slide. So I try to break this down into the five W's. So who are we really trying to um, incorporate or really address with um, our efforts? One, we want to welcome you, your family, your friends, your coworkers, your entire community. And what exactly um, would this entail? Just asking you to really consider getting more of your nutrition from plant-based sources. And that we'll discuss a little bit later how that can be helpful to our environment. And then when do I want you to do it? All the time. I want you to consider doing this at breakfast, lunch, dinner, and even for your snacks. And then where um, can you implement this? I want you to do it everywhere. I want you to do it at home, when you go out to a restaurant to eat. And even when you go on vacation, I want you to think about your food choices. And then why is this important? The goal is to really reduce our carbon footprint. And when we do that, we actually do have an opportunity to really um, address the climate crisis. And so it's really important to realize that you can do something even as a single person, because our efforts become cumulative when we do them as a group. And then that over time will really make an impact. Next slide. So I wanted to just simplify for everyone. When we talk about the carbon footprint, what exactly does that mean? And I'll just be very brief. Um, so there are three main things that um, are considered um, harmful greenhouse gases. Methane, and I'm gonna go chemistry-wise um, <laughs> just for just a bit. So um, cows and other ruminant animals like sheep and goats, um, as part of their natural digestion, they actually release methane into the atmosphere. And also their man manure also will um, release methane. And that is one of the gases that can um, be, can be accumulated and then can be harmful to the atmosphere. In addition, nitrous oxide, which we get from um, use of fertilizers, that can also be a source. And believe it or not, I'm sure many people are not surprised, we see deforestation happening a lot in our state, um, but that also impacts carbon dioxide. And that's because we need green leaves for the natural ecosystem to work well. So when we're aggressively cutting down trees, um, that's being done usually for um, you know, industry or even to um, create more farmlands for animals, but that process also um, offsets our ecosystem. So that all contributes to that carbon footprint and then that's what is contributing to our climate crisis. Next slide. So I wanted you to really think about, um, and this is where I'm going with this. So the goal is we want to limit our intake of meat products. That's the overarching themes. And I think pictures really do speak a lot. And so just removing beef from the typical American diet can really lower that carbon footprint by 25%. And if you think about it, if each person made a conscious effort to do that, Again, it's that cumulative effect that would happen. And so, um, you know, really when I say that, I mean, people are thinking, oh, I have to give something up. But what we're really asking is for you just to change the proportion or change your preferences for how you include meat products in your diet. Next slide. When we look at um, the impact of what we can do as individuals, I found this graph to be extremely important because you look at the things that we can do that really contribute to the greenhouse gases and that carbon footprint. And I didn't highlight everything here because I don't want people to think that you can't take vacation and get on a plane and go to Australia. You can totally do that if you want to. But there are some things that you might find that are very achievable um, that we can do. And one of those things, as you see here, actually um, you know, limiting dairy products, but also not eating red meat. 
So little changes can really make a cumulative difference. And I want to make sure that takeaway happens today um, in terms of the fact that even as an individual, you can actually start making a difference in terms of how we approach that. Next slide. So I found this quote yesterday and I absolutely loved it. So individually, we're a one drop, but together we are an ocean. And so individual acts can definitely grow into influential group activity. And the really good takeaway here is that consumer demand will absolutely um, influence the industry. So probably, you know, 10 years ago, um, you know, organic needs were something that we would not find readily in the supermarket. But now because there's a demand for that, a lot of places will offer that. Similarly, as we change our selection and change that um, supply request, then, um, then that will also be reflected in our grocery stores and our farmers markets. And so it will not happen overnight, but definitely by changing our choices can do that. So again, one of the effective things that we can do absolutely is to eat less red meat. Next slide. So just taking a quick deep dive. So switching to a plant-based diet has the potential to really offset the heating effect from greenhouse gases. And that can, it, it can actually limit um, global warming by about two degrees. That's a big deal. And when we think about all the unusual weather events that we've had over the past year or two, we can definitely see that we are being impacted um, by the climate crisis. And so if there's something that we can do that will have a lasting effect for future generations, then I think it's something we should absolutely consider. In addition, if you are going to reach for animal products, then the recommendation would be for you to think about things that are sustainably um, sourced or pasture raised options. And so just to quickly talk about that, there's some thought that if you do um, pasture fed animals, then they do take longer to grow. So technically they would be belching more, releasing more methane into the atmosphere. Also there's more manure, but the process of being um, pasteurized because of the grazing process and how that incorporates into the soil, actually over time, they actually decrease overall emissions. And so if you are going to select um, animal products, then I would recommend if at all possible to reach for the pasture raised options. Next slide. So big disclaimer, I'm not asking you to become a vegan or a vegetarian unless you really want to, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. I'm not saying give up everything that you love. I'm Jamaican. I love to eat my oxtails every now and then. And so I'm gonna be able to maintain that but still be able to make a difference overall. So you do not have to do that unless you really want to. Next slide. But I am gonna introduce some terminology because a lot of times people do like to identify with terms, right? And so I'm gonna introduce a couple of um, terminology that you can choose from if you want to identify with a particular group. So one is you can become a climatarian and the theme is very simple, less meat, less heat. So that's an option for you. Next slide. You can become a flexitarian. And I actually really love this slide. If you look at the bottom section, it really talks about what the beginner can agree to, what the intermediate can agree to, and then what the advanced. And the advanced flexitarian is someone who is really doing plant-based sources primarily for five days out of the seven days a week. So if you think about it, you still have two days where you could get some of your favorite items. You don't have to give it up completely, but believe it or not, every small change, even at the beginner level, will start to make an impact. Next slide you could become a planetarian. This gets really interesting. So I'm giving plenty of options for whatever group you want to identify with. And I did find a group online here. You can see they had a challenge that was done in 2021 where you could do two plant-based meals for two weeks. And so if you wanted to do like a workplace challenge, you know, like we do the biggest loser, you could do like a planetarian challenge for the office setting. That's an opportunity to also introduce that as well. And next slide. And while we're thinking about that, you know, titles are really important. As you know, um, with the release of the, the new Taylor Swift album, people are now referring to themselves as Swifties. And so technically you could become a planty if you wanted to even go there and have the pop culture theme added to that. So here are a couple of questions that I wanna address really quickly when we recommend um, that people consider a plant-based diet. Number one, are you going to get enough protein? And I have two very important pictures on here. So the first one, if you think about it, everyone, well, I'm dating myself, but you probably remember Popeye. He pulled out a can of spinach and his muscles got really big. And so it didn't make sense to me until I was really doing this, um, doing the research um, to prepare the toolkit that you know spinach is actually a really good source of protein. And so I want you to know that you can still get your adequate protein from plant-based sources. 
And um, there is some benefit in terms of sometimes even digestion added benefits from having plant-based sources of protein. I also want to include this ballerina. And um, if we have a chance to share this presentation, there's a link that I have, but I looked up diets that ballerinas incorporate because they have to have really strong muscles. They do very strenuous training and activity, and they actually do a lot of plant-based food um, sources in order for them to maintain that. And so I really wanted to um, put that out here. So if you get a chance to just Google like a ballerina diet, they actually have lots of information about how they eat and they're very heavy in terms of plant-based sources for their, um, for their intake to be able to sustain um, their training and also to improve their performance. Next slide. Can, you, can a plant-based diet actually impact your health? Absolutely. Um, lots of research, research shows that there can be benefits to heart disease, diabetes, and even high blood pressure. So there's benefits here. Um, so as a physician, I'm thinking about both prevention, but also management and treatment. And so in the event that you do um, acquire one of these chronic diseases, changes in your diet can actually impact and sometimes even reverse that. And so I wanted to make sure that people realize that there is a lot of benefit from really considering a plant-based diet. And again, in full disclosure, I would recommend this type of diet <laughs> as a practitioner. And then also there are lots of benefits to the immune system. Um, the last two years um, with us having lived through a pandemic, you know, your immune system is very important to how you um, function and to your overall well-being. And so again, a plant-based diet can actually support that as well. Next slide. So will it cost more um, for a plant-based diet? This is a big and important question. A lot of talk about inflation, the cost of everything everyone has known it has really um, changed in the past couple of years. And so my answer is going to be yes. And there are a lot of ways that this can happen. Number one, buying local, utilizing your local farmer's markets can really make a difference. Um, number two, eating from the rainbow. So when you're going to the store looking at green peppers, bell peppers, red bell peppers, yellow bell peppers, carrots, really making sure that your grocery cart has an array of the different colors in terms of vegetable options that you can afford. Buying in season is also helpful in terms of cost. So trying to get strawberries at the wrong time will cost you a lot more versus other times where you can get two for five. And so really thinking about um, adjusting your um, grocery list based on things that are in season. The other thing is buying fresh or frozen. Um, so believe it or not, frozen vegetables are actually usually quite fresh when they're prepared. And so a lot of times when I talk to patients about, you know, making um, food choices and wood products, the only thing that you should really be eating that is from a bag is a frozen vegetable. And so <laughs> that is actually the case here too. And then buying in bulk. So one of the things that is common in a lot of our plant-based recipes would be um, eating a lot of beans and peas and seeds. You can buy those in bulk and they can last longer. And so that's another opportunity for you to actually have cost savings. Next slide. So will you need extra supplements if you eat less meat? So it's kind of a yes or no question. If you are going to become a vegan or vegetarian, then that's going to limit some of your normal sources of B12, for example. And so if you're not eating meat products, that might be an issue and you might need to have a specific supplement. But if you're just reducing your meat intake and you're still incorporating other vegetables that support um, or give you vitamin B12, then that's going to be covered. So believe it or not, salmon has quite a good amount of B12. And as you can see on this picture, a lot of things you probably recognize, nuts and seeds and avocados, things that you probably would um, consider eating or are already eating. And so you would be able to maintain an appropriate diet, even if you decided to eat less meat. Next slide. So will you get bored in a plant-based diet? Probably not. Um, I want you to really channel your creative energy. And when the toolkit gets posted, we have information about really, you know, taking your taste buds on an adventure around the world. There's so many different ways you can prepare meals um, based on the different continents. And so really, um, you know, using your um, relationships with friends who are from different places and really learning from their cultures about how they prepare different foods absolutely needs to be a collaborative effort with your family and friends. You don't want to be isolated by your choices. And also one thing that I really liked um, in terms of research was a mix and match of meal prep. And so if you buy cauliflower, flour, for example, you might do a cauliflower salad one day that week. You might do some um, um, a cauliflower soup, or you can do rice cauliflower with 
later on. And so there you can use like one vegetable and make several different things. And so really using the mix and match meal prep actually helps cost savings too, because if you buy a big um, cauliflower, you need to use it up, but you can do some different things. Um, some restaurants actually now offer um, like a, um, it's instead of having like chicken wings, you can have, you know, like spicy cauliflower. And so again, just being very creative. Next slide. So let me show you the way. So I wanted to share with you a little bit about, you know, you know, when I make recommendations, like, you know, how can we make that applicable? And eating in, so for breakfast, you could just have oatmeal with dried fruit. For lunch, you could have a black bean burger. That's something you can probably access readily. Um, at home, you can buy black bean burgers in the grocery store. And then for dinner, you could do chicken lettuce wraps. There, you've already had only one meal with a protein, and that, mo that meal in the dinner time is actually just chicken. So again, that's not a bad day in terms of eating. And a lot of people now are actually doing intermittent fasting. And so most times you're actually just going to probably do two meals for the day, which makes that idea even easier to consider. When you're eating out, what does that look like for you? A veggie omelet could work. Um, that would qualify. For lunch, you could do pizza with veggie toppings. And then this is a favorite. I actually did this this week. And I went to a um, Thai restaurant and they asked you what protein. And I thought, huh, I can have tofu. And there you go. You know, you're, you're really making um, choices. And so again, um, I think it's not as challenging as you might think, but just the awareness of your choices with each meal is an opportunity for you to do that. Next slide. So here's a, a good um, website that I've wanted to recommend. I have, I'm subscribed to this and it, it's called Plant Powered and they send recipes all the time, but it's from the Eating Well magazine. And so that's something you can Google and look at and uh, lots of good recipes there. Next slide. So elevator pitch. I wanted to include this because you probably are thinking about it now, but how are you going to convince your family at home to join you in the process? And so you can adjust this pitch um, accordingly, um, but you might say to your coworker, you know, do you know what you can do to help with climate change? Cutting back on bread meat is good for the planet and also good for your health. So while I won't ask you to stop eating burgers, I will ask you to eat burgers less often. And when you do, eat pasture-picked burgers. You're in control. You can start right away. No need to delay. Real quick. You can shorten it. You can extend it. But you got to have your pitch ready because your family member is going to look at you, probably like you have two heads. I'm doing what? We're having tofu for what? And so <laughs> just be prepared for that. Next slide. So our last slide. So what's your why? And we actually have three whys on here. You may want to select one, two, or all three. Um, Plant-based eating can preserve the ecosystem and the environment. Plant-based eating can absolutely support a healthy lifestyle for you, your family, and your community. But this last one is really important. Plant-based eating can actually make a difference for future generations. And so I love this graphic. We only have one planet Earth. Eat like you live here. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you, Dr. Callens. That was great. I know um, this is, like you said, the newest of the toolkits. It's going to be really released in the coming days. Um, so I wonder if there is something that kind of stood out to you as you were putting it together, like either an aha moment or a really interesting fact um, that you want to share. Sure. So I actually am kind of converted now and um, I've made a lot of different choices. I got a caramel macchiato yesterday and for the first time, instead of getting regular milk, I got um, coconut milk. And so I'm just really being very thoughtful about my choices. As I mentioned, I went to the Thai restaurant and I had tofu as opposed to having um, some other kind of protein. And so just been very thoughtful about that. And I think that's been interesting. But what I didn't realize was really the the connection between agriculture and the carbon footprint. I really did not have that concept kind of wrapped up for me. And so really thinking about that um, was very, was a good aha moment. And also just realizing that even as a single person, I can make an impact now with sharing it with my family, my friends, my patients. And so hopefully um, the message will spread. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you.